Round three, Saturday night, Israel Adesanya will attempt his first title defense against Yoel Romero in UFC 248's main event. While the last style bender appears unstoppable, Chael, will the soldier of God be the toughest test for the middleweight champ? Ariel, try to tell me with a straight face that wasn't the single greatest lead into a round in history. Are you kidding me? Listen, I love that they brought in the dance off to this. If you told me Yoel Romero was going to beat Israel Adesanya, I wouldn't be shocked. Yoel's been a winner since he was 14 years old. I mean, there's really nothing new to see here. If you told me Yoel Romero could outdance Izzy Adesanya, the last style bender, I would take that bet all day long, and he did just that. Look, that was an athletic performance. I thought it was the most interesting part of the press conference. I thought there was a lot to the fact that a 44-year-old man without any kind of stretching and wearing blue jeans could hit a backflip and go right into a split. That is stunning to me. I think even Adesanya looked over and go, Man, what kind of an athlete am I in here with? You hit a backflip without stretching while wearing blue jeans and dropped into a splits and didn't even tear your pants? I mean, come on. I got to tell you this, though. When you look at this fight, if you look at history, Ariel, you take a great grappler and you put him in there with a great striker over the course of history that has largely favored the great grappler. It's one of the things that Hoist Gracie taught us, that Mark Coleman reinforced, that George St. Pierre, that the Randy Coutures of the world, that grappling is very good to deal with a striker. However, when you're dealing with somebody like Yoel Romero, who for whatever reason chooses to not bring his world and Olympic class grappling skills into mixed martial arts, you are now left with who is a better striker and is Yoel Romero powerful enough should he catch Adesanya to put him down? I don't know that that's a wonderful hat, a wonderful uh, rung to hang your hat on. First of all, I love the fact that the most animated that you've ever been is for this particular round and in particular because of that promo, which I agree was phenomenal. Shout out to Michael Wansover and Nate Ayub of our team at ESPN MMA for putting that together. It was phenomenal stuff. I couldn't agree more. Now, as far as the question is concerned, no, the answer is no. I like that this is like a fun little narrative that they've concocted going into this fight and I think Izzy has has, has, has fueled that fire because he's a good showman and he understands the art of promotion. But lest we forget, the man who beat Robert Whitaker twice in two sort of title fights, one an interim title fight and one a non-title fight because he missed weight, Robert Whitaker just lost to Israel Adesanya. Now, if you want to say to me, all right, that doesn't really, that doesn't really count. MMA math doesn't work that way, fine. But you just stole the words right out of my mouth. Yo Romero is an Olympic level wrestler who doesn't use his wrestling, certainly not anymore. And so what leads us to believe that this is going to be the toughest test of Israel Adesanya's career? Is it because Izzy is telling us it's the toughest test? Sure. Is it because the UFC is telling us it's the toughest test? I'm not trying to downplay the fight at all. I love the fight. I'm excited about the fight. I love the fact that Izzy said, I want to fight that guy and I'm not going to sit on the sidelines until Paulo Costa is ready. But if I just look at it, I mean, <laughs> Robert Whitaker beat him twice, and I know they were close fights, but I had Whitaker winning both of those fights, and Paulo Costa beat him, and I know that was a close one, and I know a lot of people thought Romero won, but at the end of the day, those are three losses on his record, and so I don't feel like this is the toughest test of Izzy's career, and I don't think when it's all said and done, it's going to be the toughest test of his career. I think it's a really tough test, but I'm not going to say that it is the toughest because I don't think that that is accurate. But it is in many ways the most odd, and you also have to talk about the pressure. Let's back up to Connor versus Cowboy. You and I covered that, and you and I looked at each other, even privately off camera, Errol, and we were so impressed with how Connor could deal with that pressure. And a lot of people said, pressure? He's only been fighting world title fights. How is this more pressure? That's where the pressure came from. There wasn't as much at stake. You could lose if you were Connor McGregor over the last two or three years ago. Well, yeah, I lost a world title fight. Nobody's going to kick sand in my face. There was nothing like that going to that fight. And the reason I bring this up is so many people want to argue that Yoel Romero is not not the right guy and therefore Yoel should not be put in this opportunity. Izzy's well aware of that. Yoel had a number one contendership fight and Yoel lost the fight. Yoel lost to a guy to your point twice who Izzy got out of there fairly quickly. I mean Izzy got him out of there in the very first part of the second round but almost finished him in the first round. I'm talking about Robert Whitaker. Point being all the pressure is on Adesanya. Adesanya only calls out hard fights. Adesanya called out Paulo Acosta. He no longer was available. He called out John Jones and he wasn't bluffing. John's not in the weight class not available. He defaults to Romero because he's got some kind of 
personal beef with him. I'm just saying, Errol, if you look at the matchups here, you look at the skills that Yoel has. Now, Yoel's going to need a coach who he trusts and respects to grab him by the collar and smack him a few times and say, God darn it, you're going to bring your skills with you this time. You've been wrestling since you were a little boy, and you're going to go out there and you're going to wrestle tonight. You're not going to throw away moments and sequences and scenarios. You're not going to throw away rounds like you've been doing, looking to put your foot on the gas and come on that one big sprint and surprise him. You're going to go out there, respect the 10-9, and walk away with this thing, and you're going to do it easy. You're going to do it by holding a guy down. If you well listened to him, in many ways, Arrow, you could make a strong case that we're going to have a new champion. Yes, 100%. If that happens, it's going to be fascinating theater. You've left me with no time here, but can I just say this? I'm not trying to be a contrarian, but I couldn't disagree with you more. All the pressure is on the old guy, the 42-year-old. This is his last chance. Is he loses this fight? You know they're going to give him another one. He's 12 years older than him. All the pressure is on Romero. He could go into the territory of, I don't know, Alexander Gustafson, Joseph Benavidez, some guy named Chael Sonnen, 0-3 oh, in title fights. We don't want to see that, right? So I'm just saying all the pressure is on the old guy. I'm sorry for doing that. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that. That was mean. That was mean. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+.